Hello and welcome to TVC News. Well, it's just three days to the inauguration of a new administration in Nigeria and preparations are going on with several activities leading to the much-awaited event. President Muhammad Buhari has conferred national honors on the president-elect Bola Tinubu and his vice president-elect Hashim Shatima. The president-elect was conferred with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic while the Vice President-elect was honoured with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger. President-elect Tinubu commended President Muhammad Buhari for showing the courage in taking tough decisions. Others avoided, others avoided which included recognising June 12 as Democracy Day. The GCFR is Nigeria's highest national honour and is only reserved for presidents. The investiture ceremony precedes the inauguration of Bola Tinubu and Kashim Shatima on Monday, 29th of May. We have bestowed the nation's highest honor on my first president, elect Shatima Ami. Our deep thanks also for the transition documents, which clearly enumerated the effort of the past eight years and year. The document summarizes the men's work of your administration. They constitute an impressive and noteworthy scorecard. You have made history and no one can deny your contribution to our national development. That I stand before you today to confer national honors on the president-elect and vice president-elect, His Excellency Kashim Shatima. This ceremony marks a significant milestone in our nation's democratic journey as we inaugurate a new administration that will lead Nigeria towards greater progress and prosperity. I extend my warmest congratulations to the President-elect and his well-deserved victory at the February 25th 2023 presidential election. Well, for more perspective on this, I'm being joined by a political analyst, uh, Olufemi Lawson. Good to have you on the news at this time. So, yes, let's understand how significant is the conferment of national honors on the president elect, Bola Tinubu, and his vice president, Kashim Shatima. Good afternoon. But it's, uh, it's in line with the tradition. We recall that uh, while uh, President Ambassador was leaving just about two days to the end of his tenure, 2007, then he conferred this same um, national honor on the then president elect, late President Omar Musayal Radua. And of course, his then vice president elect, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan. So this is very much in line with the tradition. And it's, of course, within the discretion of the outgoing president to confer this national honor on the president-elect Ashwadi Bola Tinubu and his vice, my Senator Kathim, Kathim Shetima. And beyond the fact that uh, Ashwadi, Ashwadi today is the president-elect and by the grace of God, the president of Nigeria in the next few days, we must also remember that uh, there is no honor too undeserving as far as national honor is concerned, that uh, Ashwadi is not qualified you know, to receive, especially when you look at his role in the enthronement of the current democracy where today he has been elected as a president. He was one of those who were in the trenches in the days of the struggle for democracy in Nigeria. So it is deserving not only because Ashwadu has become elected as president of Nigeria, but also if you look at his credentials as a Democrat who was part of those who laid the foundation for today's democracy. Right. Point taken there. So, but how will this conferment impact in their roles in the incoming, upcoming up the administration? Can you come again, please? How will this conferment impact in their roles in the next government? Yeah, yeah. Being, being, the, being the gun commander of the Federal Republic comes with a lot of responsibility 
you know, he assumed the role of the commander in chief of the armed forces, and of course, become the leader of the country. So this national honor beyond the fact that, uh, you know, they have been elected as president and vice president also comes with the sense of responsibility of reminding at all times that you are the grand commander, you have a role to play, you become the father figure for the whole nation, and you become the leader of so many you know, sectors of the nature, particularly the armed forces and of course many other you know, you know, groups domicile in the country. So it has a you know, strategic importance on the responsibility that they will be bearing as president and a vice president from May 29. All right, I understand our correspondent Femi Akonde is live for us from Abuja and he is standing by to give us more on this latest development. Femi, let me quickly come to you now. So we understand the vice president-elect has been conferred with the national honors and his vice president, Kashim Shatima. Give us a sense of how things are looking and what's the reactions following this development. Well, there is a lot of um, excitement considering how tough the battle of the ballot, that is the election, was contested and how, uh, despite all odds, the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tilubu, and his deputy, uh, Senator Kashim Sotima, emerged uh, victorious on uh, the ballot. President Mohamed Bari said, indeed, this is a well-deserved and well-earned victory for uh, Bola Ahmed Tilubu. He says, among all the candidates, his victory is a testimony that he is the most popular of uh, all the, all the um, lineup of candidates that contested the 2023 presidential election on the platform of um, 18 political uh, parties. And uh, you know, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, president elect and the new grand commander of the Federal Republic, says that uh, he understands the task ahead of him. And just as President Mohamed Bari says that he has run a good race, he has finished his course, and he will hand over to the next administration to continue from there. Uh, President-elect Bola Metinubu, in response, also said that, well, he must run this race because a baton was handed over to the president-elect in a symbolic uh, transition, civilian to civilian to civilian to civilian transition ceremony. He says, indeed, he will uh, run the race and must do it well on areas of security, the economy, agriculture, jobs, education, health, and power. He says, in all sectors, his administration must make headway, and the people deserve no less. And that's very correct because uh, Nigerians are waiting, and they do not. They are waiting for the administration of Bola Tinubu to kick start on the 29th of May. There's so much expectation, and they also look forward to when they will begin to feel the impact of his governance, the fulfilment of the promises made in the Renewed Hope Manifesto, on which he, upon which he campaigned and won elections, Kemi. Yeah, indeed, I can hear you very well clearly, Akonde. But, you know, when we understand the conferment exercise, give us a sense of the kind of perception this would transfer to the, domestic, to the international community. How do you think this will reverberate, not just in Nigeria, but as well in the international community? Well, for Nigeria, this uh, is very significant because it also creates a picture of a democracy that is not just maturing, but a democracy that has matured. That um, civilian to civilian transition, ensuring that there is no break in um, the democratic governance. We've had unbroken democracy now so far, seven uh, civilian to civilian transition in the country. You know, all of this creates a sense of seriousness, the zeal for Nigeria to. Uh, go on the path of our democratic governance. And all of this was also enabled by the Executive Order 14, signed by President Muhammad Buhari, that set up that uh, legal framework for uh, a smooth handover from one administration to the other. And the confinement, the investiture of the uh, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic is also one of um, the items contained in that um, document, that legal framework, Executive Order 14, signed by President Muhammad Buhari, it stipulates that before inauguration, the president-elect and the vice president-elect will be conferred with these uh, highest honors, the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic and the Grand Commander of the Order of the Ninja. Before then, uh, the, uh, before, that is before swearing in on the 29th of May. There are so many activities are lined up, but the most important thing we saw also was the handover of the document, uh, that is uh, the transition document to the president-elect. 
President Muhammad called President Muhammad Buhari called it a policy status update. It would ensure that the incoming administration understands how far and how well the previous administration has come in terms of a governance and know where to pick it up from and of course the path to take towards um, national growth and development in the country. Right, Femi Akonde, live for us from Abuja. Thanks a lot. Well, we still have our political analyst, Femi Lawson, still standing by to give his perspective on this developing story. So let's wrap up with this question. What challenges do you think that incoming administration might face now during this democratic transition? And how do you think they can address this effectively? Well, um... It's going to be quite challenging for the new administration from May 29, especially when you look at you know the country that will be handed over to Ashwaju on Monday. That nonetheless, based on its experience, its antecedent, and the kind of team Ashwaju Balati Nubu may likely be working with as a president of Nigeria, it is hoped that key challenges, particularly in the area of security and the economy, are going to be squarely tackled first. Before other, I know he can come up with his, plan, his agenda for his own government. But I think most important, irrespective of the 7.9 point or whatever point or agenda, the administration of Ashwadi Tinubu will be coming on board with key issues of security and economy. I think must be made a priority because if you look at the reality on the streets of Nigeria today, what is most concerning, what, what is of, mo of the most serious concern for the average Nigeria is the state of insecurity and the current state of our economy, which has, of course, been one of the most ter terrifying times for us as Nigerians in the, in the recent time. So beyond whatever program and policy the administration is coming on board with, I hope that the administration will prioritize the, cha the issue of security and, of course, that could be crisis that the economy is currently facing squarely before other programs or policies are given, you know, whatever attention it desires. All right. Enormous task ahead indeed for the incoming administration. Ulufemi Lawson, thank you very much for your insights on the news at this hour. Coming up on TBC News, 